Welcome to Oddball History, dipshits. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. How, 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 how? Every episode, that's how it Everyone, started. Everyone, you thought we were kidding? We were not. We're not. We're serious. We mean business, and the business today of Oddball History is uh, Earl K. Long, Uncle Earl. Oh, Earl Kemp Long, a uh, really uh, classic character of uh, Southern politics of the 50s and 60s. Louisiana state politics in that time was literally just six guys yelling at each other. Mm -hmm. If I could sum it up, the good old boy system. And they, uh, yeah, and the Longs were uh, the goodest of the good old boys. <laughs> yeah. They, uh, Huey was the big one. He came first. He was yep. the governor of Louisiana. He was the 40th governor of Louisiana. Our man Earl would go on to be the 45th. Yep. Um, uh, but. Huey was a very, very uh, powerful man. I was reading a little bit of backstory about Huey, and he was assassinated uh, prior to a run for president. Uh, But he had these bodyguards that were called either uh, Cossacks or Skull Crushers, and they went with him everywhere he went. Sounds (laughs) sounds legit. Yeah. As any honest politician (laughs) has not sketchy a crew of Cossacks with them. I just have thugs. He has some thugs. So this guy assassinated him, uh, and then uh, the autopsy, uh, that guy, they shot him uh, back, and they did an autopsy on him, found that uh, the old Skull Crushers, uh, they had shot him 60 times. That'll do it. That was like... That's, that's enough. Like, that's like five minutes of shooting in the 30s. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's so... Few. They reloaded a few times. Whenever you reload a few times. They stopped and had lunch. <laughs> they yeah. went back to shooting. It's like, my finger's tired. Can I take a break real quick? So crazy. Yeah, that's and that's uh, that's old Huey Long. And then uh, Huey actually, his death precedes. Uh, Earl wasn't. He really didn't break into politics he was, until he, after Huey's death. He lived in the shadow of his brother a lot. Where he kind of followed him around and was, you know, in his footsteps. But Huey was obviously the star of the family. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. He did a bunch of crazy stuff. He was the Hillary Duff. (laughs) Who's who's Hillary's sister? Haley Duff. Also talented. uh, Was in Napoleon Dynamite. Taylor, are you familiar with Haley Duff? Fuck yeah. yeah. My wife laughed at that. <laughs> All right, good. <laughs> she is working in the other room, work from home. Beautiful thing. It is. But so uh, Huey was uh, a corrupt man. Yeah, but he bo- was a... Uh... Both of them had this in common is uh, they were leftist populists, and so they got Hell a lot yeah. of good stuff done. They which did. Any history you read about American politics, we've been arguing over the exact same things the entire time. Yeah, he did a lot. He uh, the good things Earl did. He expanded voting rights. He increased teacher pay. Uh, he made it so uh, black teachers were earning as much as white teachers for the first time, uh, and undertook a bunch of public works projects. He was, was like good a, stuff. He was against big business. Supported the the little guy. He just all they both just did a lot of crime in the meantime. Which yeah, is, they were you know, just a little mob bossy. As you well, got to take you know, the good I, with the bad. They, uh, <laughs> and Huey, they, Huey was a bit of an egomaniac. There was a funny story about him. Uh, the LSU had built a pool, and at the ribbon cutting ceremony, the guy was like, "If you only built it five feet longer, it would have been the biggest pool in the country." And Huey shut it down and made him build it five feet longer. Hell yeah. Which was, a, I thought that was a fine I appreciate story. that. As uh, Dallas people know, that's why the um, the giraffe statue at the Dallas Zoo, I always heard that was why it was so freakishly shaped. It has, <laughs> it's a statue of a giraffe with its tongue out, like it's going for a, you know, like a eating a leaf off of a tree. But I heard that it wasn't like it was, it shouldn't have been quite as long as it was, but they were going for that record. So now we have this giraffe <laughs> oddly deformed in South Dallas with <laughs> yeah. a fucking Gene Simmons tongue greeting all our visitors yeah. coming up my 35 fire, from the South. My fire stations around there. We drive past it a lot. That it is funny. Is the Dallas Zoo it. had a rash of losing animals there for a minute. There was, yeah, it was like uh, in six months, they lost like four different things. They were like, ah, shit, uh, <laughs> Uh, monkeys out. We lost a lion. Yeah, it Everyone was will a, be on the lookout. You're driving around the hood, just see fucking zoo animals around. Tamarin monkeys. Two was, tamarin yeah. monkeys got out together. Yeah, but another. And then I is, happened to get around the same time two tamarin monkey butlers, <laughs> and everyone got all <laughs> suspicious of me. Yeah. I'll never forgive them for that. That's yeah. 
what are the odds? Yeah. You know? It's it's uh, Tamarin Monkey Butler owner discrimination. That's what it is. That's what it is. Earl K. Long would have supported you. <laughs> Earl As... Long would have had my back on this. <laughs> yeah. That's for sure. You know why? Because he was a friend of the little man. He was. If he wasn't, why would there and be a is, folk song about and him? And who is the littlest there man? Is a... The littlest man among us, if not a Tamarin Monkey Butler. That is so true. It really makes you think. It really does. <laughs> this is this was just another fun LSU thing. Where uh, they didn't have it in the budget when they built one of their original state, I think it was this like the previous stadium to Death Valley, but uh, they didn't have it in the budget for to spend that much money on a stadium, but they did for a dorm. So they built a conspicuously stadium shaped dormitory. <laughs> <laughs> I love. And I that. think they're like they're still there, but they're using for storage. But, I love that. <laughs> yeah, what a good little government funding r- loophole. Yeah, that's so great. It's like, no, people live there. That's a dorm. It's a dorm. That also has 80,000 seats yeah. around a football-shaped area. You never heard of no 80,000-seat dorm? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, this is SEC country. Our dorms yeah. have several thousand seats. <laughs> yeah. Okay, back on track with... Uh, uh, Huey and Earl yeah, Long. So he gets, so Huey gets elected to Lieutenant governor in 1936, shortly after Huey is shot to death by the guy who gets shot to bits by the Cossacks. Yep. Uh, so he is, uh, finally he's, he's in government. He's Lieutenant governor. Uh, remember what we said, like about how Louisiana politics was really dirty at this time. The, uh, governor is, uh, resigns in disgrace in 1939, which, uh, provides our man with his first crack at the governorship. He takes over as governor from 39 to 40. What does our man do? He steps up to the plate and he points out a shot and he wins his governor election after losing the previous seven or eight. Yeah. He was really, he stepped up to plate a lot. He did. He was not. Yeah. He, he, he loved stepping up to the plate. <laughs> Uh, even sometimes if, uh, like before, uh, Huey was, uh, assassinated, like he would not endorse, uh, Earl. Yeah. They had a, they had like office. They had a falling out <laughs> because, uh, Huey is like, I don't want people to think that I'm doing like a family political dynasty. Cause that might intrude on the family political <laughs> dynasty I'm trying to do. <laughs> so he would not, and he was like, that's too obvious. I need to stick to, uh, I'm just going to hire all of our family to work for me. Yeah. Being quieter about it. They have different names. Some of them, you have the same <laughs> names too obvious that he did have a funny story where, uh, and he's crazy as shit. That's the is, other thing is even before our Uncle legitimate, Earl, mental health concerns will crop up in this episode. Earl long is known as a very eccentric man. Yeah. A very drunk, increasingly drunk, but really <laughs> even before that, he, the word is always eccentric, which in the 1950s, yeah. God knows what that means. Oh yeah. It's not good. But, uh, uh, Huey was at a speech and it was during one of their fallout periods where Huey and Earl weren't necessarily on good terms. And Huey's doing his thing. He's, you know, getting the crowd going. And he's like, I have done something for every single man, woman, and child in the state of Louisiana. And then a heckle from the back of the room comes out. And he goes, you ain't done nothing for me. And it's his brother Earl yelling at him during a speech. <laughs> you can't have family hecklers, you know? But That's that- so good uh, because it reminds me immediately of the time uh, Oasis did Unplugged. But one of the Oasis brothers was too hammered to play. So we're like, all right, just go off to the side, uh, functioning uh, Gallagher brother, you play the whole unplugged. So the drunk Gallagher brother uh, just gets another bottle and goes up to the balcony and just heckles the shit out of the one who has to do the show alone Hell yeah. because he got too <laughs> hammered. That's a true. This is your, you're going to be punished for my problem. Exactly. This is the same same kind of deal playing out. But Huey fantastically responds and he goes, "Oh yeah, I've done something for you. I built one of the finest insane hospitals in the country." Which, oh boy, is that some foreshadowing for later, Oh shit. everybody. And he's like, no way, that'll never happen. <laughs> Not and to history me. history will prove me right. <laughs> uh, and so, yeah, he, uh, but, you know, uh, his brother's dead. He's no longer keeping him down. No, <laughs> no or holding him down. <laughs> I don't know if, if that was their uh, relationship. <laughs> you know, I didn't really read into that too yeah. much. But uh, he... Uh, He's governor 39 to 40 after the other fella resigns in disgrace. He loses the election in 40, but he comes back in 1944 with a vengeance 
uh, loses again, uh, actually, but uh, blames Secretary of State Wade O. Martin, makes an enemy for life. They always mention Wade O. Martin being uh, one, of, one of Earl Long's enemies, enemies. which I, lo- I love that they're just like... Uh, they're I'm like cartoon this, characters. <laughs> yeah. They're like, you have like a set enemy. Just imagine like if racist Monopoly men just <laughs> hollering at each other constantly. Yeah. Earl bit a guy one time. <clears throat> he got into I a fight it. and bit a guy. <laughs> you know what? I believe it. That crazy <laughs> son of a bitch. A crazy SOB. He, uh, yeah. So um, I would not want to be on a crazy louisiana governor in the 50s uh, what did he uh, bad side one of the things they got in trouble for uh, just to get into kind of some of their corruption is they had what they called a, a deduct policy deduct where <laughs> what they would do is to have their like political machine with the long family they would they made a law where they would deduct 10 percent of state employees salaries and it would go towards their fund to do their live their private lives and fund their political campaign. <laughs> <laughs> and this is, you know, this isn't like the thirties when it was just like, Oh, what do you, we just made a law. Like, yeah. come on now. We just passed. There's a, a depression there's... out there. You got to be thankful for what you get. You That's know, right. now I'm going to drive away my black limousine. Like a not criminal person would do. <laughs> Look as Southern politicians, we all need money to buy hats to fan ourselves <laughs> with. Yeah. All right. Those hats don't just grow on trees. You know, No, they do not. We have to buy those hats that we're always fanning ourselves with. They did some hacky. Uh, actually. So I thought about this. One of their uh, political scandals was they had an unpopular vote that they were trying to pass through. And uh, Earl went in and they fucked with voting machines and they knew everyone was going to vote no, so they just switched in the machine that no's would be tallied as yeses, and yeses would be tallied as no's. <laughs> <laughs> and so the vote came back, and it Classic. was overwhelmingly yes. I like that. It's like a opposite day yeah. in school. When yeah. You'd uh, be like, you're really cool. Oh, but it's opposite day. Oh, that's what they did. They just didn't just tell crushing. the voters that it was opposite day. <laughs> And that's no, there's nothing I, uh, illegal about that. It's when the governor whispers psych under his breath. Yeah, exactly. That their, fingers the were crossed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> their fingers were crossed the whole time. But that was uh, nowadays. I was thinking about this where it's like uh, that sounds like a hacky voter fraud thing to do. You know, you can't be that obtuse about it. But this was before, you know, voting machine fraud became more commonplace. It's like how Seinfeld's jokes are a little out of touch a little bit, just like the straight up observational silly stuff. Where now it's hacky, but when he was doing it, he was cutting edge. Yeah, for sure. So he you was... gotta view this voter fraud with like, you know, the you know, the rose colored glasses of history where they were really pioneers at the time. And yeah, I think that was, should be noticed. He was killing it. And I love uh, just the audacity of it. It's very fun. You know, again, that's the thing about these old Southern Falls. They are very audacious. They, uh, yeah, they're operating like, you know, God Kings, a lot of them. Uh, he, uh, yeah, they did say they were like uh, little despots. <laughs> yeah, actually, uh, Huey's nickname was the Kingfisher. Yeah. Which, cool nickname. Again, if you want a cool nickname, it seems like being a corrupt politician governor is in the, the way 40s, to do it. Or the 30s is a good way to do it. Well, some more corrupt stuff Earl did is uh, he, it was all like changing laws to give himself powers and change stuff and then to do something messed up to someone and be like, the rules are the rules that I changed yesterday. Yeah, or strip powers of people who yes. he didn't care for. Or he took a guy, I forgot what commission it was, might have been the railroad commission, but he changed in the bylaws of the state that he was in charge of the appeals process for firings. And then like the next week, <laughs> he fired everybody. <laughs> and then when they appealed it, it was just Earl being like, yeah, you're still oh, fired. Whoops. <laughs> Oh. Me again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, me again. Oh, I'll go get the manager. Oh, wait, I am Him. the manager. <laughs> uh, Which, God bless him. Yeah, you know, he was a, he was just thoroughly corrupt, and you got to respect that, I think. Uh, <laughs> uh, 19, four, okay, where are we? 1944, he lost, uh, made the enemy Wade Martin. 1948, he wins again. Uh, in that term, he's, you start to see some health issues. He has a big heart attack in 1950. Yep. Um, 
and 52 because of term limits. He sits out, but he does participate uh, in this instance, particularly by uh, he smeared a fellow Democratic candidate, Hale Boggs, as a communist. Yep. Uh, he, uh, Strong move. And uh, yeah, it's thought that and then he kind of uh, used his power to not let Hale Boggs defend himself against the accusations that he was secretly yeah. leveling against him. And a lot of people think that that contributed. And to it's him always losing. like in like like trials where like some like a big company has a you know millions of dollars worth of legal protection, and they like exclude certain evidence. And it's always just like, well, that's the thing that. Yeah. That's the whole point of it. it's the thing you excluded. And they're mm-hmm. like, oh, those are the rules. I'm sorry. Now defend yourself. And you're yeah. like, fuck. Yeah, so many law and orders where that happens. <laughs> and you're like, God damn it. Is anything admissible? You know? <laughs> yeah. Ice Cube needs a win. <laughs> Ice tea. Ice tea. Yeah. Ice tea. Apologies. And Ice tea isn't involved in this part of the show because this is when it's moved on to the court. You know? <laughs> yeah. so this is the order he's half doing, he's doing of the, law and order. He's doing the law part. Yeah, I right. never, I never uh, divided those two in the title. I like that the law part and the order part. I watched a bunch of them, and eventually, after like years of watching them, it uh, came to me. I was like, "Oh yeah, like the beginning is the cops, <laughs> and the end is, is the, the order." <laughs> wow, I, I, my mind's blown. I literally just learned that. So. I just pieced that together that that was the format of law and order which i've seen almost every episode that's the end of the podcast everybody i don't mean this episode i mean in general that's what we were doing we've solved it that's the question of the universe that's right we're done but we'll talk about (laughs) 1956 uh is uh kind of the beginning of our story where we take off and um our main story and earl's finest moment as a politician he wins uh the governorship easily in the election of 1956 wins it in the first primary which like i'll admit i do not understand the uh gubernatorial election process from uh louisiana uh, back when we were talking in the 50s. Yeah. It seemed very uh, complicated. And frankly, I didn't try that hard <laughs> to grasp it. Uh, but so he won. He won in the first primary, and that, I'm told, was a big deal. Yeah. And he said uh, afterwards, he said, Huey never done that, did he? Nope, he did That's not. That's what Earl said. He's like, That's uh, how Uncle Earl was a man of the people. Huey being shot to death. Not enough for Earl. <laughs> he's <laughs> he's got to still stick it to him. <laughs> yeah. But that so, will uh, show him. Yeah, so he uh, takes office, you know, he's uh, riding high, uh, and I do mean that literally. He has started (laughs) taking copious (laughs) amounts of pills. He's doing the old, um, like you hear about it all the time if you're a professional wrestling fan. Yeah. The wrestlers that are on the road, and they're always beat to shit, so they're always either taking something to get up or come down. Yeah. That was Huey. He was always either like so tired he had to take something, uh, take an upper uh, to stay awake and do his uh, shit. Yeah. And then he was always taking downers, uh, like immediately after. Like it sounded like it was just he was He'd walk off stage. Oh. <laughs> yeah. He was like twenty minutes for a nap, downer. You know, like that, that kind of oh, got to get up, upper. Yeah. Like it's uh, it's what killed Chris Farley. I mean, uh, yeah. He was like Homer Simpson in Hell on that one Treehouse for Horror when he asked yeah, to eat the donuts. When he asked to eat the donuts. <laughs> and man, yeah. And he is eating the pills like those donuts. <laughs> he's uh, he's enjoying Thank it. Thank you for running with that. Enjoying it like <laughs> Homer <you>. did. <laughs> yeah. And the demons are looking at him like, what do we do what now? Do we do? Like, good God, he loves he the pills to do so this. much. We're almost out. Uh, I, so, threw a and real, then, I threw a real limp one out there, and Scott ran with it. I pre- That's teamwork. You know what? Hey, I took half of two levels of improv. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Did you take improv classes? A long time ago. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I did. I did a few, uh, yeah. I did level one and two because Me I didn't too. know how yeah. to start comedy. Mm-hmm. And it's a class. You can take the class. And then once I was there, I started doing open mics and that was, I went off running with that. But yeah. I definitely, boy, did I do those first two levels. And were they awful? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Improv is, especially when you like, once you get better at it and you like pick your people you vibe with. But those classes, when it's just like yeah, you, a mom, an old guy, mm-hmm. and like another funny person. An old guy who's like doing this for business. Like he's <laughs> yeah. like, this is what I want to give better out. speeches like, at work. Like, oh boy. Yeah, we had, yeah. 
Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, you, like oh, Toastmasters improv. exist. You can do Toastmasters. Yeah, toast- Don't do Come level on. three improv. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Please, no. Oh, man. But Such so, memories. <laughs> Where so, are we? Pills. Uh, in addition, uh, drink it. Uh, our man Earl Long, I mean, a Louisiana governor named Earl Long from the 50s. Of course, he's he going to like drinking. a cocktail. Everyone yeah. there loves drinking. Uh, and um, April of 59 is the first time that they, the AP reports a story because usually they kind of, they're, they report like if the governor looks drunk, they're not going to report that he's drunk, you know. But in 1959, it starts to get. So over the top that they start reporting on it and they talk about, uh, they described him at a really contentious legislative budget hearing and he had a bottle of this stuff called Titchener's antiseptic on the table in front of him. So I was looking up Titchener's antiseptic, Yeah, 70% alcohol. It is not, it's like a mouthwash and used to clean wounds and stuff. But apparently people used to drink it too, including uh, Earl Long uh, openly. He, I guess because it was, he was like, oh, this is my mouthwash. Nobody will know. You I, know? Just, I might yeah. have to clean a wound with it at some time <laughs> during the, but so he has a, yeah, yeah, the, it was real weird researching it because there's nothing that comes out and says like people drink Titchener's, but there's a lot of like cultural evidence that yeah, people that's drank what Titchener's. it was used for. That's crazy. You think like he wasn't a poor guy. He's like well to do. He just had he some just, whiskey. He or, just needed that Titchener's that flavor. T- <laughs> that Titchener's. Yeah. It is supposed to be intense. I was reading like even if you use it as a mouthwash, it's like a like it'll Ooh. blow your mind. Like yeah. you're supposed to cut it with water if you use it as a mouthwash. So you know who didn't cut it with water? Earl okay, Long, Uncle Earl. Long. That's right. Never he forget. He wasn't scared. Uh, of no Titchener's antiseptic. <laughs> yeah. So he's drinking a lot. He's yeah. he's losing his mind. He's sleeping two hours a night, and people are getting concerned uh, about him. As which he, they had conflicting reports. They were like looking back in history. It's like he was clearly bipolar, and they're like, was yeah. he struggling with dementia at the end? Was he's drug addled? Very much like Elvis at the end. Like these things spiral out and come to a pretty quick decline. Yeah. And he's having, uh, he's ha- he's and yeah, just overall really poor health. Yeah, uh, he's eventually he is uh, strapped down to a gurney and put on an Air National Guard plane to Galveston, uh, Texas. Uh, y'all know Galveston; it's the one down on the coast with the beautiful brown waters, brown water, oil tank, the, oil rigs as far as the eye can see. The uh, that uh, the boardwalk is cool. I follow a photographer who takes a lot of uh, shots of the sun setting at that boardwalk in Galveston. That's really nice. Is I that a personal it. friend? No, it's not. It's just some guy. Okay. Yeah. What a what a niche to fa- find yourself in. <laughs> yeah. Just no. Galveston sunsets. You know, it's a uh, cool looking. There's, you could find uh, other sunsets in prettier places, but it means something in Galveston. That's right. It does. Yeah. They need that sunset. A little down on relief the boardwalk. from life in Galveston. That's right the and i went on a uh sophomore biology trip there once Ooh, (laughs) (laughs) did you learn a lot that was the end of that anecdote (laughs) no i don't remember learning a lot i remember i did not want to go because we had baseball games and they were like you have to go and miss the baseball and i was like i don't want to go miss a baseball game but then i did enjoy (laughs) I, i did enjoy it it was fun we played a game in the uh in the pool where it was like all us dudes we had a hotel towel and the whole goal was to touch the towel to an opposite. It was like a very uh, rudimentary sort of like football. Cause it was yeah. all a very shallow pool and we all tore our feet the fuck up. Uh, but man, what fun. It was a good time. I do love the childhood games of just like you take this and you touch that yeah. in between combat. <laughs> yeah, it became, yeah, it became uh, pretty intense. We, we were players of smear the queer in the original format. When that was the title, you didn't understand the implications of it. Yeah, but I'm like not a fr- sure a front, if we ever a front yard of a home with the side, like the front walkway, like the sidewalk leading up. Oh yeah, that was perfect to go from yard line. driveway to driveway. Mm-hmm. You got to get past the 50 yard line. That's we right. Played the shit out of it. Yeah, yeah, we played a lot of football uh, when I was a kid. Uh, it was a good time. Yeah, tackling a relic now the name smear the queer now it's just like tackle the guy 
That's what we called it. I sport. think that's what we called it when I was a kid. I, th- I think we called it Tackle the Man. And we were kind of aware of that it was called Smear the Queer. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. But I don't think we ever... And there was a there was another name for it, too, that I... Uh, I forget what it was. There was a third one. But yeah. Oh, yeah. I played. Pick on the different one with the ball. Pick on the different... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get who's different. <laughs> yeah. yeah he our, has a ball. Get all him. of our favorite game yeah so uh earl is strapped to a gurney on the air national guard plane he's taken to john seeley hospital in galveston uh here's a funny part of the story they told the doctors at john seeley hospital in galveston that he had agreed to go yeah (laughs) and he very much came out swing very much had did not agree to go uh and he um had a couple of uh violent episodes uh with these uh with the doctors you know a guy that shouldn't be in an insane asylum when he Uh gets to an insane asylum he eventually begins fighting everyone (laughs) yeah it's fine he refers to them as horse doctors he the the doctors at john seeley hospital the Uh, highest of insults to old-timey doctors Mm -hmm. he's uh he does a tv show has a joke about that uh what oh rick and morty where she's a veterinarian Oh and yeah, she goes, I'm a doctor. And it's like you're a horse doctor. Oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah, one. it's been a while, but I remember it. He does. Uh, uh, he uh, Earl. He did a TV interview while he was in Galveston uh, by phone uh, with this TV station in uh, Louisiana, where he said, uh, "I'm no no more crazy than you," which isn't the best <laughs> argument I've ever heard. And then he had he had a hearing. Uh, uh, but before the hearing, before they made a ruling in the hearing, uh, Earl makes a deal with his wife, Blanche, and their oh, no. um, his wife, Blanche. Nobody bark. I have dogs are in the room. Do- you keep talking Dog about party. Blanche. You keep talking about so Blanche. Bl- <laughs> so he makes a deal with uh, his wife, Blanche, and his nephew, uh, Senator Russell Long, who is the son of our man, Huey Long, uh, dear departed Huey. Uh, Blanche and him, uh, Blanche and Russell make a deal with him that he will uh, leave John Seeley Hospital in Galveston and go to a different hospital, Ox- the Oxner Foundation Hospital in New Orleans. Uh, and so he uh, agrees, uh, agrees to go there, uh, gets there, and then pulls a wild card. So that was funny of him like trying to get back to his home state. Because they, he was, you're not, you're not imprisoned on a psychiatric hold, mm-hmm. but this is also yeah. the 50s, rules are different. But he has access to a phone. And so he immediately starts yelling at like the guy in charge of the hospital. And he's like, was it uh, Belcher, Boucher? Oh, well, that's the, so that's the state hospital. We're yeah. still at New Orleans. Oh, sorry, sorry. And New Orleans, uh, so uh, he, well, what happened, oh, he's not at New Orleans for long. He gets there and tells Blanche, he's like, yeah, I agreed to come here, but I didn't say how long I would stay. And so he leaves immediately. Always with a loophole. <laughs> and then, so. Uh, I just need to ride back to Louisiana. <laughs> Blanche then gets who, you know, she, people understand what's going on and with her running after her uh, increasingly insane husband. So she has a lot of allies, kind of, and she has a friendly judge sign an order to get him committed they uh run him he's in a car with like a state trooper and they run him off the road uh in shreveport and they do this little ruse where they're like uh they're like we're uh just gonna escort you uh up to your house in uh, i think it was winfield uh winfield it was called i remember his house was called the pea patch which i thought was interesting because that was also the name of r kelly's house (laughs) it was spelled differently but same name (laughs) But so they're like, yeah. we're going to take you over to Pea Patch, your one, not yeah. R. Kelly's one, the <laughs> less disgustingly yeah. spelled one. And uh, but they don't; they're not taking him there. They're taking him to the state, state hospital. hospital in Mandeville, the um, the southeastern Louisiana uh, state hospital. There's a Beautiful funny town. slash heartbreaking line where uh, I read a quote from him where uh, he was like, he was like, oh no, that looks like an asylum. Don't take me there. Or something like that. (laughs) Real last minute complaint from him. Just like, wait a second. Actually, no, wait, I have to go back a little bit too because there was one stop. So they, when they run him off the road, they actually take him to a courthouse first. And there's this insane scene at the courthouse because uh, 
Earl refuses to get out of the car. He mm-hmm. has a bottle of whiskey next to him on the seat. And he not old is, faithful. yeah, and not, not Titchener's, yep. his, his old standard, just regular whiskey. He must have been feeling like tying on a light buzz that day <laughs> rather than a Titchener's I'm not buzz. Trying to get wild. But so um, he's, he gets to where he's having like a full on like tantrum. It sounds mm-hmm. like in the back of this car, he's saying, uh, he's saying, I want to go to the mansion. I don't want to go to the, I don't want to get in the car. I want to go to the mansion. He's screaming this and uh, hollering that they, they can't get him out of the car. So they just have some people come out and evaluate him like in the car. They're just like, all right, well, this is clearly a crazy person. You. I do um, like that. It's like a childhood tantrum, but he has a mansion. <laughs> Yes. And he's uh, like, yeah, all right. And he's... I want to um, go to my mansion. <laughs> also loved loved this part. A crowd starts to form naturally because this is a crazy scene. A governor yeah. uh, refusing to get out of the car and uh, all these people crowding around uh, wanna. trying to get him out. Um, and at one point, Earl, in a very move uh, very much like the end of training day, when Alonzo tries to get everyone to kill uh, Jake yep. for him, uh, this is very much like that. He wants the crowd to attack the cops <laughs> on his behalf. He's <laughs> trying to incite the crowd. Yeah. He's, and he's saying to him, he's saying, and they've got guns. They've got guns. Don't let them guns stop you. <laughs> Which I gotta say is a little mixed message. You shouldn't say it three times. You should go, but, um, don't let those guns stop you. But if we go, they've got guns. They've got guns. You'll get shot if you do this, mm-hmm. but do it. Yep. But uh, ultimately, the folks, they did let them guns stop them. Yep. Uh, they were stopped by the guns. Not this a bad mo- move from mo- a person. Most of us let would be, you know. Let the guns stop you. They guns should like, stop you. Not not going to die trying to def- defend um, Earl Long today, you know. Uh, but eventually, so he, nobody rushes, and eventually they just have to wrestle him out of one car and into another. He takes a swing at a cop at one point. He yep. tries to run away at one point. Like, and he's this an old is man wild, at this time. <laughs> this is a wild, wild scene here. <laughs> Um, and then, uh, yeah, but they rule that he needs to go to the uh, state hospital. Which, boy, Indeed. if you're ever trying to have an argument to not send yourself to a state hospital, yeah, doing all of those things goes yeah. against you. Not the most. That'll hold up in court. Not the most convincing argument <clears throat> anyone has ever seen. So he's sent to the state hospital. And now uh, here's where he pulls the <laughs> ultimate shady governor magic trick is where he talks to the head of the hospital and it's like hey i'm the governor you're gonna let me the fuck out of here and the guy goes no oh yeah when he meets the guy at first did you read that part the guy came met him at the front door dr charles belcher the head of the hospital and he said uh i'm dr belcher and earl said the hell you are you were you were (laughs) dr belcher So uh, off to a good start immediately with the new <laughs> yeah. hospital. And also, what a line by Earl. Yeah. Like, holy shit. <laughs> the but hell like, you oh, are. Oh, God. This. You're a horse doctor. And frankly, A common like, insult he would say was shit ass. I, I like that. Which I enjoyed. Shit ass. Shit ass. Kind of like poo butt. You remember poo butt? <laughs> I was the PG so confused version. by poo butt. Uh, but it was in the movie The Program. Yeah. You remember the movie The Program yeah. about the college animal? football? Alvin oh, yeah. Mack. Uh, he was a linebacker and he would always talk shit before the snap. And one time he was like, <laughs> he called, he called somebody, he goes, I'm going to some you poo butt motherfucker. <laughs> and I never could hear I, like, I was like, you say poo butt. And then I heard the MWA song where they use the term poo butt. And oh, I was okay. like, Oh, it was poo butt. <laughs> and this has been, I have to be the poo butt minute. <laughs> <laughs> About the Brought to you by Charmin. The term poo butt. <laughs> Those bears know what they're doing. They okay, do. so he's in the hospital. Little he's insulted the doctor. He's, he's yeah, he's threatened the doctor. The both doctors that run the the head of the hospital Belcher and the head of all hospitals the state system um, he calls Bankston. and the guy's like, "No, you should be in the hospital. We're going to keep you." Jesse Bankston. They're both like, uh, "What the fuck do we do here?" <laughs> like, and eventually, yeah. especially Belcher, Belcher, the head of the hospital, eventually Bankston tells him, "Keep him under heavy lock and key." Like that's the order right now. But let him have that's a all phone. we can do. But let him have a phone. Surely, surely nothing <laughs> terrible will come of that. Uh, Boy, did he get to all, using that phone? Yeah. So he gets. Yeah, he gets on the horn. Uh, he finds out that he is allowed to fire uh, both Belcher and Bankston. So uh, he does it. 
Uh, he's there <laughs> for eight days. He has them replaced with uh, some sympathetic friendly, figures. With some sympathetic figures. I just also love that, like, this is all like legal stuff. It's not mm. like, is it ethical or moral? It's just, is it legal? Yeah. And so you'd think there would be like a caveat of, hey, if the guy that's in charge is in an insane asylum, he's not allowed to make new rules. Yeah. But well, there's what a saying in. is that all rules are written in blood and like blue collar stuff. Because it's like, if it says like, if there's a specific rule about something, it means someone did something awful. Yeah. It's like whenever there's a sign, it's like, don't put your dick in the toaster. It means someone put their dick in the toaster and they yeah. have to say it out loud now. Yeah. And we don't even get to hear that story, which I think <laughs> yeah. is the worst part of it Which maybe our next episode will be about the toaster <laughs> dick guy. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I would uh, love to research the dick toaster <laughs> guy, uh, wherever he is. Uh, he's, so he's gone. <laughs> he's dead. He uh, fell to but so dick, uh, he dick literally toasting. He gets on the horn. He changes the laws. He gets these men fired. He replace all like while being in an insane asylum. He replaces them with people he knows, and magically they immediately release him. Mm-hmm. And then he's uh, he heads to uh, Covington, Louisiana. They have a uh, hearing in the Covington Junior High gym, and a judge went ahead and made it official. He said, "You are free. We love you, Earl. Here's some Titchener's. Go fuck up the town." No, <laughs> that's then, all they said. But, the, oh yeah, <laughs> what were you gonna say? <laughs> no, that was it. He, I was gonna I say he didn't the, really say that thing yeah. about the Titchener's, but he did <laughs> set him free and was just like, "You're loose now." And now that he's publicly a crazy person, had all this drama, then he quietly retires at his state i'm just kidding he ran for congress and won <laughs> yeah. yeah no and he gets no less weird of course after he gets sprung he went he stayed in covington for a while he well, went to like a 19, motel was that 1959 he went to uh yes this is yeah. uh still yeah in 1959 he and he uh it's right after they made the ruling he went straight to this motel and just made it like his headquarters and then uh at one point he called a press conference yeah that was a, a very bizarre press conference where his bare feet he was under like completely flat on a bed like flat like i don't even know if he had a pillow under him and his bare feet were out from under the bottom yeah. of the blankets, and he didn't have his teeth in. Uh, but he called this press conference. I don't even really. I think. It, uh, I think it was to announce that he was going to be campaigning. Yeah, <laughs> He's like, I'm going to get out there, and everyone's like, "You look like you're about to fucking die." Is what it looks like you're about to do. But he actually did. He actually made it out of the bed, started campaigning again, won uh, the election for Congress, and then. He did die. Yeah, he and never. In the run up, he actually did. He uh, he was he was campaigning, but people were like, "He's not the usual great campaigner that we've seen, yeah. Uncle Earl." Uh, but at one point, he said, uh, "And I quote: In thirty days, I'll be as good as new." And uh, instead, he was dead within the year. Yeah. Of, uh, <laughs> Of what happened to be, uh, I but think the thing that got him was a second fatal, was, was a fatal heart attack. He had already had the one heart attack, and then he had had a bunch of series of uh, strokes, like all through like the late 50s. Yeah. So he was just uh, in uh, bad shape, Terrible frankly. Shape. Uh, impressive. I, just, I just love that you can have like this publicly of a uh, just meltdown and your health's awful, and then like you still run for Congress and win. It's yeah, like people don't care. It's like you know, like dead people winning. Like yeah, that's happened a few times. It's like uh, I feel like that's like been with like Biden, his presidency is everyone just being like, is he gonna explode? <laughs> I think at any moment in time he's gonna explode and then just be dead. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I do have some. Uh, uh, I do yeah. have some. Fun. <laughs> he's an old man. He's he an, old man. an old man. Um, uh, yeah, I had another favorite part too a, a little uh, a little um, let's hear it addendum my favorite part was a little story i read about um this enemy of uh earl long named dave pierce no okay. one knows why him and dave pierce got to be enemies he was like a he commissioner him. of agriculture and uh forestry and he actually worked with uh in a government with earl long so nobody really knows but anyway uh earl long at some point 
once he's doing the long thing where he's you know uh, running a guy to make his enemy lose. So he gets this uh, state entomologist named Sidney McCrory to come in, and he's like, you'll be my man, you'll beat Pierce. Uh, but he spends his whole time campaigning every campaign stop, no matter where it is. He just rants about this specific type of, uh, bowl worm that attacks, uh, cotton crops yeah. because he's an entomologist. Like this is a <laughs> shit. He this loves is the it stuff he's fired up about. so much, but so it didn't matter if it was a part of the state that had cotton, which that was good. People there were like, Hey, we get what you're saying. Yeah. Thank we you, love sir. it. But then he would also do the same speech in like new Orleans in front of a bunch of fancy like city yeah. folk or a place in the state that had no cotton that was like timberland like yeah. it didn't matter he was talking about the bowl worm, <laughs> this and apparently, bowl worm. the whole time uh, earl long is just getting fury he's like this guy <laughs> fucking stop talking about these goddamn worms leave the bowl worm out of it yeah, I loved that. His self-picked guy. And he's like, this fucking <laughs> shut the fuck up about fucking the fucking cut the bull worm. <laughs> we fucking just know. say what we said. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah. I just uh, I, I took a picture of a bunch of quotes from Earl Long just so you can get a picture of the kind of guy he was. Some of these are actually decent. Where uh, This one is uh, don't write anything you can phone. Don't phone anything you can talk. Don't talk anything you can whisper. Don't whisper anything you can smile. Don't smile anything you can nod. Don't nod anything you can wink. And live, laugh, love. <laughs> live, laugh, love. No, that was good. I liked it. Yeah. I was pretty much just like, just be a better liar. Hell yeah. <laughs> Don't get you know, caught. And I he, could see that on a on a piece of driftwood at Target. <laughs> I'd buy it. Like, I'd set that son of a bitch on my I like how there's mantle. an aesthetic of pretend driftwood <laughs> with fancy <laughs> sayings on it. Yeah. He goes, the kind of thing I'm good at is knowing every politician in the state and remembering where he itches, and I know where to scratch him. hey Sexual? <laughs> yes. Literally. Whatever he said, that, that's how that quote ended with him going, literally. He's like David Pierce, center talking. of the back, a classic man. <laughs> but I'm He would never. <laughs> no. But I'm in favor of every religion with the possible exception of snake chunking. Anybody that so presumes on how he stands with Providence that he will let a snake bite him, I say he deserves what he's got coming to him. <laughs> he was a reasonable man. Fair enough. A yeah. $400 suit on him would look like socks on a rooster. That was at Dave Pierce. Damn, <laughs> Dave, you got fucking ass. owned. You got 24 hours to respond, son. <laughs> yeah. This one is in relation. This dude's clowning you, <laughs> Dave Pierce, you long dead politician. <laughs> yeah. On the 1940s edition of Wild and Out, they are getting after it. I like to think an angel in heaven is tapping Dave Pierce on the shoulder <laughs> right now, being like, dude, they're killing you on this podcast. <laughs> uh, and this is in relation to earlier, we talked about the uh, voting machine fraud they committed. And mm -hmm. he had a he had made a statement of a I could make them voting machines sing sweet home or sw home sweet home. <laughs> Hell yeah! I'm just like I can do crime. Oh, good. the longs, you you incorrigible fellas. But yeah, that's the story of the time. Oh, he also had an affair with a stripper named Blaze Star. Blaze Star, which I appreciated. I think there was like a time in history, like JFK did it. This is back when stripping involved, you had to swing tassels around <laughs> yeah. with your tits. It was more, that was most of it. It was more burlesque than well, like what we think of went, stripping Rrr! now. But there's a long and storied history of like prominent politicians and people like banging the most famous burlesque lady of the town. Sure. And I appreciate the hell out of that. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know. It's something like a bygone yeah, that, era. Yeah. And that, I will say, did not, uh, there were reports that that did not help when it came time to decide whether if he should be committed or not. When it came to Blanche, his wife, that she was like a little quicker to be like, oh, yeah, before I get this guy out of here. <laughs> I got the pee patch to take care of. This fuck. Little side note about Blaze Star. Uh, on her Wikipedia, it lists her occupations as burlesque dancer, stripper, yada, yada, yada. And then it has gemologist, which Hell is yeah. a, a, a quackery where it's all crystals and bullshit, which I do appreciate of like the hot girl job evolution has always been consistent where you go from like Hooters to real estate and there's a few stops in between. Mm -hmm. And then like you get yeah. your chance at like Hollywood or showbiz and that fizzles out and you get into new age stuff of like crystals and yoga. Yeah. And I like that's a, that's a very long path that's been around. It's a very well, well trodden path. I love yoga. 
Yeah. It really loosens up the spine. I did hot yoga on Sunday. Ooh, that's intense. That's too intense yeah. for me. I do a very lazy brand of Well, that wraps up yoga. our story of Earl. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Earl. Uncle Earl. Being a crazy guy. And so um, I, I want to get into the hot has yoga. Has a bitch in grave. Does he? Earl, Earl Long. Not Mandeville. I think it's in um, Winfield where he was, where the pea patch is. But yeah. it's like a life-size statue of him. And he like, he, he like has his hand raised like he's making a big speech. It's yeah. very cool. You know, I'm no, I'm no grave critic, professional grave critic. But this one's pretty cool. <laughs> Jules Verne has probably the coolest grave I've ever seen. I didn't it's know. the one where like. Who is Jules Verne? I think uh, I might be misremembering, but I think he's the one where the guy's coming out of the grave, like crawling out of the grave uh, scarily, and it's really cool. Let me see. I, I, who's the uh, the actor with the deep voice that was the broke out of the gimp thing in Pulp Fiction? Uh, Ving Rhames. Ooh, boy. That's who I thought of when you said Jules Verne. Oh, that's a great. Yeah, Jules Verne. Yeah. Wildly not the person I was thinking of. He's busting out <laughs> of the grave. I was about to say, I didn't know Ving Rhames died thinking that was him, but yeah, that's different. Jules, <laughs> <laughs> Jules Verne? Jules was... The black guy with the cool, deep voice? <laughs> he passed away? Oh, no. <laughs> that's a crazy one. <laughs> Not Jules. Uh, you don't yeah. get a lot of modern different statues. Guy. Ving yeah. Rhames might have a cool grave in the works, too. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. One can only hope. He deserves it. One can it. hope. He deserves yeah. a grave as well. Where Pulp Fiction, I have now pronounce you Chuck and Larry, you know. Mm -hmm. storied career other stuff probably other too, stuff one would have i'm to forgetting assume. right now yeah but uh oh uh, i was gonna tell you about the hot yoga thing i am the 2024 winner of our station fat off oh hell yeah my fire station did a weight loss competition and i came in under the wire and uh like i went on vacation with my wife's family and we were at, like an all-inclusive resort and there was like a whiskey dispenser in the room and Damn. buffets for every meal, not conducive to your weight loss goals. And I was like, ah, I'll just be okay. And then, uh, went to a big training for four days, which at night it's a bunch of firemen. Everyone goes out and drinks and stuff. And then I come home, I weighed 227. Oh yeah. And then I weighed in Sunday at 5:30 in the afternoon at 216.2. Damn. Made an nice. eleven pound swing. Hell yeah. Went and did a hot felt. went and did a hot yoga in the morning for an hour. And then went and bought a day pass to LA Fitness. Uh spent an hour and a half in the sauna. Hell yeah. Which was like people rotating in and out when you're in that long. And this was in a, the the right neighborhood for it. Not proposition once, not even a side eye anywhere. You know, you hear the rumors, and I'm a little upset that no one even, you know. Yeah. I didn't get put you in a compromising unwanted. situation in any way, shape, or form. Mm -hmm. And then I came home. Uh, I was like a pound off where I needed to be. So I put a bunch of sweaters on, got on an exercise bike, lost that last pound. Hell yeah. And then, yeah, did just a full on Congratulations. like MMA cut <laughs> for, <Yeah. laughs> for pride. <laughs> Hell yeah. Just because I wanted to wear win. one of those garbage bag suits. If I had one, it would have been worn, but I could have made it. Yeah. Just Get Taylor out there with duct tape and garbage bags. The scented Glade ones. Might. Lock yourself in a car in the yeah. sun. <laughs> like those babies. Old school. Like yeah. the babies in Chicago. <laughs> I'm just too quick to judge. <laughs> <laughs> you got any stuff going on? I uh, I got uh, Wednesday, April 17th. I'm at a, doing a Cowabunga show at Intrinsic Brewing in Garland. Hell yeah. Is that the it's new Wednesday, one they're doing? Wednesday, April 17th. Uh, yeah, that's the new one. Yeah. And then Thursday, Cowabunga, May 2nd. We had Vinny on for the uh, Von Steuben episode. Yeah, that's his uh, his show. Yeah, he runs great shows. They're always fun. And then uh, Thursday, May 2nd, I'm at uh, Hyenas Fort Worth for a 325 show. Nice. And um, uh, I will be at uh, Hyenas Fort Worth this Thursday. I will be at Hy or Hyenas Fort Worth Thursday the 11th. And then I'll be headlining Rose City on Saturday the 13th in Tyler, Texas. Hell yeah. So, hell yeah. Good Those times. are fun shows. Good times yeah. at Rose City. Yeah, for sure. I like it a lot. I also wanted to say, uh, I on a recent episode, I suggested that we should uh, all, like as a city, band together and frame Jason Kidd yep. for murder. You remember that? Yep. Uh, and I'm sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> now that the Mavericks have won 11 of their last 12, I can see that was wrong. <laughs> Uh, I shouldn't have said that. Here's our oddball history apology to Jason Kidd. Mia culpa of the week. 
<laughs> to Jason Kidd. Here's yeah. our apology. Sorry, Jason. You got the boys playing good. You know, once the yeah. roster got upgraded, everything's looking good. How about Daniel Gafford? Man, what a stud. The kid's and playing. And PJ Washington. I mean, both the new I guys. I think that should be a segment. I is love our, them. our weekly apology Mea to the guy week. we wanted killed earlier. Mea culpa of the week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Although, uh, Skip Bayless, you are never getting one. Never. <laughs> yeah, fuck Skip Bayless. Another thing I saw this week that I thought was interesting was I was watching an I Love Lucy from the 50s. And okay, okay get this. Ricky is going on a tour, right? But Lucy wants to go on the tour with him because she wants to be on the show, if you can imagine. Yeah. So uh, Ricky's like, how do I go on tour uh, and without Lucy, how can I just go do my shows? And Fred suggests to him, he's like, Hey, why don't you just tell her you're going out for a pack of cigarettes and not come back for three weeks, <laughs> <laughs> which is hilarious. Uh, very like standard that, that, move now that became this is a from trope. the mid fifties, which makes me wonder, did Fred Mertz invent like modern deadbeat, deadbeat dads yeah. with that line? That was like like we're all, the, all these people and these family men in America saw this episode and were like, Fred's Holy right. Shit, I could do that. I could, I could hey, I'm going to go get a pack that. of cigarettes. Hey, yeah, all of them in unison are like, uh, hey, hey I'll be uh, back when you're 18. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, yeah, wondering on Fred Mertz inventing uh, deadbeat dad. They were pioneers. The, the patented deadbeat dad move. Yeah. And Fred Mertz is just like off the dome. They're the greatest the generation. And they were the greatest at all things, including being deadbeat dads. Mm-hmm. So they you gotta, invented it. They invented it. Got to give credit where credit is due. Our deadbeat dads stand on the deadbeat shoulders of <laughs> yeah. deadbeat giants. <laughs> comes down to it <laughs> and that's an oddball history uh, promise <laughs> yeah we miss you earl long rest in peace and jewel and <laughs> jules verne and jules verne we loved your Ving work Rames, wherever fiction. you are i hope you're preparing to have your statue made <laughs> yeah you want to be crawling out of the ground <laughs> yeah all right. see y'all next week